What's up guys and welcome to another Android review. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil. In this case, I'll be reviewing and giving a quick overview of the various elements as far as the Android 12 update goes for the OnePlus 9 Pro. So I'm on the carrier branded uh, variant of the phone. So that's why the review is a couple months later than the um, update that the rest of the, or the global version of the ROM received back in mid December to mid January. Um, issues with the update aside, I had no issues with the update itself. So um, granted that's probably because the carrier was waiting for a stable version of the ROM before pushing it out to its users, but overall the wait seems to be worth it. Um, so like I said, this is the update for the carrier branded version of the OnePlus 9 Pro um, 5G. Um, one of the first things you'll notice that for me I like over the Pixel 6 Pro is the ability to remove the um, Google widget pill thingy at the top, the one that I just highlighted. Um, notably because um, while it does work the same as the pill on the one or on the Pixel 6 Pro, the Pixel 6 Pro's version of it is a permanent fixture on the home screen. For the OnePlus 9 Pro, you can actually remove it. So if you don't like it, don't use it, prefer, you know, a more detailed whether widget or just don't want it there, you can remove it and use that space for other items. On the Pixel 6 Pro, the easiest way to get around it is to use a custom launcher, which may not be uh, an option for everybody. Um, from here, you will notice that there is a slightly revamped um, home screen editor. So once you long press on the home screen, one of the first things that is a nifty little feature is if you need to rearrange your icons. Um, so let's say I want to move these icons to another home screen or I want to rearrange it. You'll select it like I did. Then you'll hold down on one of them. And then for example, if I want to move them to another home screen, I'll drag it over and release them. And I have now moved them over. Uh, let's say I want to move them back. I'll do the same thing and move them back to the original home screen and you're all done. If you wanna add a widget, you'll hit the plus screen at the top left of your screen. You'll go find the widget that you wanna add and you'll add it just like you usually do. As far as a wallpaper picker, one of the niftiest things that I like about this is a new inventive wallpaper. So you can create your own wallpaper based on a new picture that you take or an existing picture saved on your device. So, um, or in Google Photos. So I'll go in, I'll pick this picture and I'll jump into um, the mo one of the camera modes that I just got with this update in a second. So once you uh, select the picture, it'll analyze the colors. It'll start off with a default, but you have a bunch of different options that you can check out um, to play with. My favorite is the last one just because it's the one that works best on the home screen. The notification icons are still visible and it's easy to still read the weather on the home screen. When you hit apply, you'll get a preview of how it looks on your home screen. So if you don't like how it looks or the colors are not right, or you wanna use one of the other options, you can still do that. Um, from here, you'll do apply, and then you can select lock screen, home screen, or home and lock screen, and it'll apply the wallpaper based on your choice. So definitely one of those bene those updates that are definitely worth it so i def i recommend trying that out so going back to the camera mode that is now available on the carrier branded version of the oneplus 9 pro on android 12 um, if you're on the global version then you would have gotten this update in android 11 and that's a mode called the xpan mode so when you open your camera you go on over to more and then you'll now see an option called xpan so what this does is it uses your 48 megapixel sensor along with the 50 megapixel ultra wide sensor to take two pictures and combine them into one super large panoramic style um, picture. Um, the default option is the 45 millimeter mode, which is a standard picture, but you can also take um, an ultra wide picture called in the form of the 35 megapixel mode, 
which is kind of just a zoomed out version of the 45 millimeter cam uh, picture. It does the same thing on both modes where you can, or it uses, it combines a picture from the 48 megapixel sensor and the 50 megapixel sensor and combines them into one super wide um, image. Um, the other nifty little thing here is you can also take the same picture in black and white if you so choose. So the picture quality overall is pretty decent. Um, I did take it in my initial test. I did take um, two pictures um, that were kind of noisy. So I do want to take another picture on a uh, less noisy picture, you know, with a less, you know, colors or grass or uh, less a field of a less of a field picture just to see how the pictures come out. But this is a couple of samples to check out if you are so interested in using this expand mode. So with that being said, that's all there is for that. As for, and uh, one other thing before I forget is um, while the, the one of the other features of the OnePlus launcher that I like over the Pixel 6 launcher is the ability to double tap to lock. Uh, while OnePlus doesn't have the long press to lock option, um, so it's like, you know, long pressing on the recents menu to lock the device or turn off the screen anymore, the double tactile lock works because it's easier to find an empty space on the home screen versus reaching over to the power button every time to turn off the device. So that's one of those benefits that the OnePlus launcher has over the Pixel 6 launcher. Um, in addition to the raise to wake option, so when you pick up your device, the screen will automatically turn on, which I'm finding is more consistent than the Pixel 6 Pro. So that's one of that's another reason why I didn't want to go with it. Um, jumping into the settings, the the feature that the Pixel 6 Pro or does better over the um, OnePlus 9 Pro, and it may be some, a feature that gets added later in Oxygen OS 12 or you know with the OnePlus 10 Pro is the personalization and theming options. So while you can still you know use an icon pack to change your the look and feel of the icons, and you can change the colors manually on the OnePlus 9 Pro, the um, Pixel 6 Pro actually does it better than um, the OnePlus 9 Pro just because it themes your um, apps and your notification drawer and various other colors a lot more seamlessly and smoothly than the OnePlus 9 Pro. So going into so you know doing something automatically versus manually is generally better. And not to say that the Pixel 6 Pro is perfect. You know it only currently themes the Google apps and certain other apps that support that theming option at the moment. So, you know, if you theme your icons, you'll see that Gmail is themed, but as far as I remember, Teams is not, uh, WhatsApp is not, Pocket Cast is not. So it's like you have two different groups of icons. So you still have to go in and change, pick an icon pack on the, on the OnePlus 9 Pro. Whereas on the Pixel 6, you have to install a custom launcher and then install a custom icon pack to get that unified look and feel. So the Pixel 6 Pro does not support icon packs either, which is kind of a bummer if you want to use the, their default launcher and have a custom icon pack. So from there, as far as the OnePlus 9 Pro, you still have the option to change use a Roboto or OnePlus font, change the font size and display size. Um, you can change your fingerprint animation, the horizon light, and things like that. So you do still have those customization options, but they are still pretty um, manual. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, was there something I missed, um, didn't miss? Um, if you're a fan of the OnePlus shelf, it is a little bit harder to access it, especially if you have small hands or don't like to reach to the top right of your device, which makes me feel like they're trying to phase out the shelf in favor of putting everything on the home screen. Um, but for me, the redesign was nice, but it just feels like they're making it harder and harder to get to the shelf, especially since you can't swipe down to act, to switch between the notification drawer or the shelf. And swiping right is now focused on you on accessing the Google Discover feed instead of the shelf. So 
it just feels like they're get, making it they're trying to phase out the shelf or they have other uses for it and it just feels like it's harder and harder to get to the shelf to begin with but overall i like the update um like i said the wallpaper picker is nice the app animations when you open and close apps are pretty nifty um overall um uh the swiping um, left and right is very smooth, so I definitely recommend getting the update. Um, I'm still messing with the battery usage just because um, I, initially the performance or initially a battery usage was pretty good. Um, battery life it lasts pretty good, but I think I noticed a, a little bit of extra battery usage once I got the DuckDuckGo um, tracking protection. But I want to make. I'm not gonna chalk it up to them just to make sure that it wasn't something that I did or install some other random apps that are also draining the battery. So, in general, though, overall the battery usage is normal. It's not any more or less in um, Android 11 or Oxygen OS 11 or anything like that. So. With that being said, that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, you can comment on this post on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode, and until next time.